Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amun Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to see how we can write good assertions for our API test. In in case of API test, we normally have to assert a lot of things in the response. For example, uh, response status code, response cookies, maybe response headers, or something in the response body itself, or sometimes the schema. So there are different components that we have to validate in a, in a response. So how we can you know do the assertion in a much better way using assert J, right? If you use testng or jmit, uh, the code might not look as readable as you do it in assert J. So I will cover a very good uh, use case this time, right? So if you notice, uh, we have already done till here, and we want to validate these things. So okay, uh, I want to validate whether the status code is true, not when whether it is returning correct response. I want to check whether it can be deserialized back to uh, the, a particular class. We want to check some, some value in the body. We want to check the header uh, content type, whether it is having application JSON. So these are all some of the checks that I have took here. Uh, so, so let's do it. So if I try to write them uh, one by one, okay, let's say even if I use assert J here, assert that, and then I have to say response dot, uh, status code, uh, and then I have to say is equal to 201. So this way I can write multiple assertion statements, maybe four or five to validate all of them. But this case, this is not that readable. And then these are all very minute information and user doesn't have to know about. It. So again, these are all again the implementation itself. Rather what we can do, if we can move this logic to a separate asset class. What I can do is I can also create and uh, uh, assert class, okay, assert wrapper, whatever, and then uh, I can simply say response assert. Okay, this for this is very common. Uh, what I can do is is uh, extending uh, abstract assert. Okay, this is coming from assert J, so I am extending this, and it's asked for self. So self is response assert, the cl current class name that we have created. And what we are going to pass as an input to this class, we're going to pass response, okay? We are going to pass response to this. Now it says create constructor matching super, that's fine. Now uh, it is protected. Uh, we can also make this as private and then we can create a public static method uh, with the name of assert that. But before that it should return response assert Again, guys, I have already covered this in multiple times. So, so I will say assert that. You will find the readability at the end. So if somebody is passing me a response, okay? If somebody is passing me a response, what I do is I simply call this, okay? To call this, I need to say return a new response assert and I have to pass response here, right? So the response is this response. And also I need to pass the self class that is response assert that class. So response assert dot class, right? Here, if you notice, uh, we don't have to even pass this parameter. If we hard code it here, uh, if we hard code it here, we don't need this parameter at all. So we can simply say like this, right? So this is something that we could do. Apart from that, I can create a public uh, response assert. Uh, I want to create a fluent assertion. So I, I'm returning the response assert instead of void. And uh, I simply say uh, status code is, right? And uh, if somebody is passing me the uh, expected status code, expected status code, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, you can do soft assertions or hard assertions. In my case, I prefer doing uh, soft assertions. So I say soft assertions, soft assertions. Okay. And then you can you new soft assertions, right? So you can also do this like this, or it's better um, we do it here. Soft assertions equals, right? So yeah. So now uh, what I can do is soft assertion dot assert that if assert that where we'll get the actual code, okay? Once you pass the response to this, okay, what it does is uh, it has an abstract asset class where it stores, has a value called as actual. So in this, uh, whatever the response that you pass, it'll be now available in the actual variable, okay? So you can simply say actual dot 
which means status code. So this actual, whatever the response that you passed is now accessible via actual variable. Now this is the actual value. And what do you want to do? You want to check if it is equal to uh, whatever the expected status code, right? And then you want to override the error message. You can also do that. Um, you know, it's up to you. But in this case, it is very simple. So I will keep it very minimal like this, right? So now I go to request test. I want to write this assertion. Instead of writing like this, I simply say response assert dot assert that whatever the response that I have here, I want to assert that, okay? So the first thing is I want to check whether the status code is 201. Now, after that, what do you want to do? I want to do deserialization check. So for that, uh, we need the, you know, user response detail, whatever, new class. And it should have four parameters, right? So we know it's just returning name, job, ID, and created it. Guys, don't try to reuse the same class for request and response. Always have them as separate things, okay? So name, job, ID, and created it. Let's go here in the private uh, string name, okay, job, and we also have created at, and we have ID, right? So string ID, yeah. So this is all good. Uh, now it it will work. And apart from this, I also need to add, uh, you know, getter methods at least. You want to deserialize them, uh, the setter method. Sorry, uh, if you want to, yeah. Uh, let's go here and uh, and also go to response assert. I'll create a method for this. Let's copy this, paste it. Uh, can be deserialized. Okay, two can be deserialized two, and somebody has to pass me the class type, right? And uh, they should pass the class here. Okay. So they should pass the class type here. And here, what I can do is assert that code. Assert that code. Okay. Whatever the code that I'm going to execute now, that is actual dot as, right? Response dot as, which means it will try to deserialize this back to class. Okay. Once it's done, I want to check it does not throw any exception here. That's a very important thing to do, right? So uh, it says, hey, you're trying to do uh, raw use of this parameters class. That's fine for now. Um, and I can simply go uh, here and then I can add can be can be deserialized to uh, what is the class name? Uh, it is user response details dot class. That's it. Now, what else we can do? Uh, body value. I want to check something in the body. Uh, so I hit something and I want to check the job is leader, right? So I can add one more method there. So let's go there and copy this. And say um, has key with value. Okay, I can have something like this. And then if somebody is passing me key, comma, string value. Okay, if somebody is passing me, uh, they should have a key of job and with the value of leader, something like this. Then we can also write code like that. Okay, or we can say have as job with value, right? So you can hard code that, right? And we can simply say, assert that, um actual dot get uh get uh body dot get okay so this is basically having a problem here because we want to access the response right so um i will try to convert this uh I will try to uh, convert this to this particular class, and then we can do a uh, get thing getter methods to access the job, 
or we can use JSON path, right? So actual dot body dot JSON path, right? And we can simply say get string uh, job, right? This should return me that. And I want to check if it is equal to the value that they are passing, right? So you can do that. And if you are passing key with value, string key from our string value, you could also do that uh, has key with value and whatever the key that they are passing here, you can pass it here, right? But this is not really good because uh, if it is present in the root node, it will work. Okay, if it is present in the root node, it will work. Otherwise it won't work. But in this case, it's okay. Uh, let's go here and add it as key with value for job and the value is leader, whatever, right? Similarly, we can also add it for uh, has content type. You can, you can parameterize like you want, or you can, you can, you don't have to even parameterize in some cases. It's up to you, uh, content type and content type. Somebody is passing me this. I will check actual dot get content type and I'm gonna say is whether it is equal to whatever the content type these guys are passing, right? So it's pretty simple. And at the end, I want to assert all of them. So I will create one more method that basically returns void and has assert all because soft assertion, we have to assert all of them at the end. So we don't need any of these and we will simply say assert all. You don't need this. Now let's go here and let's also add as content type, content type dot JSON dot assert all. So this way, all these things are very easy to write and much readable, right? So assert that the response status code is this, can be deserved to this, as the key with value of this, and also this. Let's say in certain cases, uh, if the, this can be even optimized with, uh, with predicate, okay? Uh, what I can also do is if somebody is passing me predicate uh, predicate of response predicate because sometimes it will it will not present in the root right so it it might present in the nested JSON so in those cases how do we validate it so here you can say soft assertion dot assert that you can even pass predicate to this. And then you can see whether it accepts this value. Oh, okay. So if somebody is passing this, uh, I want to say it accepts actual, right? So you can do the something like this. And here, if you want to use that, you can say has key with value, and then you can pass the predicate, right? So predicate can be something like this. Predicate response. Same thing we are going to do a little differently uh, here. So basically it accepts res, okay? And I'm gonna say res dot JSON path dot, here you can give whatever the JSON path you want, okay? Uh, you can get it as list, you want to do whatever, but at the end of the day, you do the evaluation. It just wanna check if it is present there or not. Okay, you can give path. Let's say I wanna give a different JSON path, like abcd dot EFG, you can do that, right? In my case, I'm gonna directly do job, okay? Dot equals ignore case, whatever the conditions you want to check, you, you do everything here, okay? You do everything, whatever you want to do, you do everything, uh, you know? And then you can just pass the predicate, right? This way, uh, you can have better control. This, this job can look present in anywhere. You can still validate them because you have the controls of the JSON paths here, right? So that's the power of functional programming. You can ignore this if you don't uh, know how to write it, but yeah. So let's try to run this and check if this is working, right? You can add, uh, you know, other other validations like these uh, schema schema checks, everything, but you can wrap them into the response of a class. Okay, so if you notice, uh, I'm expecting application JSON, but it is a little different. Uh, so yeah, this is an assertion failure. I can fix it. Um, you know, maybe I'll get it and then I'll compare the string instead of directly checking the JSON because uh, it was basically returning something like this. Okay. 
uh, okay i can have something like this uh but you know this is less or you know maybe uh you can say string content type if somebody is passing this i will check is this is equal to this right um uh, let's try to run it once again So as long as there is an error, it will evaluate all the condition, it produces error. So now all the tests are passing. So now our code looks much readable. Your assertion is very, very readable. And this is how we can manage these things, right? I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, Tata, bye-bye, bye-bye, guys.